Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lecture of the third module. The disclaimers remain the same. So today we will be looking at you know transistor implementation of switches. So in the last lecture we were discussing about how we can realize inverters or non-inverting buffers when we have you know a switch, a positive switch or a negative switch and resistors. But as I told you that you know while making the layouts, resistances occupy a large amount of area. So we prefer to replace them with transistors. Also, the switch implementation using transistor is kind of the best implementation, I would say. And at the same time, you know, uh, it's not only about the area of the resistor, it's also about, you know, the performance. So we found out that there is a trade-off between the delay and V-swing or, you know, VOH minus VOL or the power dissipation. So for that, what we want is, we want that, you know, our resistance is also input dependent. So that kind of feature can be implemented when we use transistor as switch. And we can also use transistor as, you know, the dynamic resistor that we want in order to, you know, remove that trade off. But for now, let us concentrate on transistor as a switch. So we discussed in the second lecture of this course as well, that, you know, these transistor, like there are cells in the body, these transistors form the like basic element of all the smart devices, right? So it has the same structure in the digital systems or in the modern systems, modern smart systems as cells have in the human body. So I told in that lecture that these transistors simply act like switch and then they help implement all these discrete digital circuits. And in turn, these digital circuits kind of implement the logic gates, the logic gate implements modules, and then several of these modules combined together to form digital systems. So here we'll be talking about, you know, MOSFETs as a switch. Why MOSFETs? VJTs were also pretty common. I mean, uh, till 1990s or something, VJTs were dominating the market. This also I discussed in the first lecture. But you know, beyond that, it was MOSFET which continued to dominate the market. Even till now, it's the MOSFETs which have been dominating the market. So we'll be talking about MOSFETs. I have discussed a fair bit of MOSFET in you know, the discussion sessions and in the first tutorial. Just to give an overview, the MOSFETs, as long as you know the gate to source voltage, the magnitude of that is less than the threshold voltage magnitude. Why I am talking about magnitudes? Because this, this way you can generalize it. For PMOS, the situation is different. I mean, the VTH is negative, but if you talk in terms of magnitude, then you are even covering PMOS. So be it NMOS or be it a PMOS fit, whenever you have VGS less than VTH, you make your device resistance or MOSFET resistance as pretty high. And for switch, in the last lecture, we found out that you know switch needs to show two discrete levels of resistance. When it is off, it should show, show a very high uh, like resistance. And if it is on, it should show a very low resistance, right? So whenever VGS is less than VTH, I mean the mod of it is less than mod of VTH, then you have high resistance and a low current. Typically, uh, the VGS, which is used for denoting you know uh, off state of a switch, when MOSFET is acting like a switch, is VGS equals to zero volts. So here, unlike you know the case of analog circuits, we are not biasing it to some VGS such that it's in saturation, but we talk discreetly. I mean. We talk about two distinct levels of input. VGS equals to zero typically represents logic level zero as the input to that MOSFET. And when you have VGS greater than VTH, I mean the mod of it is greater than VTH, we say that the MOSFET acts like a closed switch or the switch is turned on. And in that case, it offers a low resistance between its train and source terminals. So gate is your input and like gate, gate here acts like the input A and X and Y terminals of the switch are brain and source respectively. So here, whenever your mod of VGS is greater than mod of VTH, we say that, you know, the MOSFET as a switch is closed, or I would say it is turned on and it shows a very low resistance or a high current. And typically MOSFETs get turned on or the turn on voltage that we choose for logic one or input logic one is VDD or the V supply. Now you may wonder what should be the ratio between R high and R low. So for an ideal switch, it should be infinity, right? Because you want, you know, the, want it to turn, like you want it to turn on uh, like abruptly. And also the R high should be as large as possible so that no leakage flows and R low should be as small as possible so that whatever is at the train or whatever is at node X gets reflected at node Y. However, I told that, you know, there is something called sub-threshold conduction or below VTH also, some current flows in a MOSFET because still, you know, uh, there is some diffusion current that can flow. 
also over the barrier i mean the energetic electrons can flow over that barrier that i was discussing in you know discussion session 1 and because of that there is a finite amount of current that flows through the mosfet even when you know you talk about vgs less than vth and that is exponentially dependent upon vgs minus vth anyways let's not go there but just because of those artifacts what we have is r high and r low are not infinity and you know zero respectively they are finite and the ratio between them what like what would you call as efficient switch efficient electronic switch ideal the r high by r low should be infinite but in practical case in practical scenario if the transistor shows you some r high and some r low how can you classify whether that is appreciable to for the transistor to act like a switch so there is a finite limit i would say r high should be greater than much greater than r low but if r high by r low is at least four orders of magnitude then we can say that it's a fair switch i would say that it's a good switch it's not a bad switch so this r high to r low ratio translates into i on to i of ratio of a mosfet so typically in your ultra scaled mosfet also this is the kind of you know order of magnitude of the difference between i on and i off or r high and i low that people look at so if it is showing you four orders of magnitude it's perfectly fine now the thing is you know the sub threshold swing of mosfets is limited i mean uh, the rate at which the current changes upon the application of your gate voltage that is limited in a mosfet so you know mosfet doesn't act like a perfect switch so people started you know there is a quest of this perfect switch which is going on right now people have come up with different mechanisms i mean uh, one of the ways to improve the quality of mosfet as a switch is to introduce more number of gates from planar mosfet people move to double gate mosfets then they move to fin fets even tri gate mosfets then they move to gate all around nano wire then they move to nano sheet or like you know um multi bridge channel whatever you call it so if you increase the number of gates then you are improving electrostatic integrity or then you are increasing the ability of your transistor to control the channel region so by that you are moving your substitute swing close to 60 millivolts per decade however it's the inherent mechanism that is you know that over the barrier flow of electrons that is the energetic electrons can flow over that barrier that is the major reason which limits or restricts its substitute swing to 60 millivolts per decade so apart from increasing the number of gates what people have proposed is people have also proposed alternate conduction mechanisms for instance tunneling can be one mechanism by which current can flow so in the transistors where tunneling is the dominant mechanism by which the current flows they are known as tunnel fets they show a substitute swing which is smaller than the mosfet so let me just discuss about tunnel fets in a like a bit so this curve represents the characteristics of mosfets tunnel fets and an ideal switch so here for a mosfet the current reduces to like when you have a vgs equals to 0 the current reduces and then it kind of remains constant or it just reduces further however for a tunnel fit which is represented by this t fit you see that at zero volts it shows the minimum current the current increases sharply as compared to a mosfet however even for negative voltages there is this current which is flowing in the tunnel fit i mean if you make the voltage negative and increase this voltage in the negative direction then also current flows through a t fit so now i like you know leave this to you to analyze or to think about it or ponder whether this kind of ambipolar current so this property is called ambipolar current why ambipolar because it can conduct for both positive polarity of gate voltage as well as for negative polarity of gate voltage with minimum being at zero volts so this can be taken as off state this will be on state is equals to vdd even this can be taken as on state now you just think about it whether this kind of characteristics is beneficial for digital circuits or it is you know worse for digital circuits so think about it just to give you a hint suppose there is a noise on the input and the noise is reducing the input voltage below zero so if it is reducing it below zero maybe you know that since it's giving you a positive current which is high i mean uh, since it's giving you a current which is appreciable to the positive voltage i mean let's say the noise is minus 0.5 volts so it will give you around 10 power minus Eight or something current like that, and for minus eight amps per micrometer or something. Then it is possible that this may be interpreted as logic level one. Although you were applying a zero voltage because of noise, it was going minus point five, and then you were getting this. So you just you know think about it whether this ambipolar current is beneficial for digital circuits or is it's detrimental for digital circuits. So I'm bringing this point uh, 
So let us now look at the characteristics beyond zero. So ideal switch, what should happen with it? It should have a very small resistance. I mean, a very low current, I would say high resistance here or a very small current when it is off. And immediately when you, once you turn it on, then it should go sharply and the on state current should be high or the on state resistance should be low. So this is the property of ideal switch and it should change abruptly. So the sub threshold swing, if you calculate here, it should be you know pretty small, close to zero millivolts, zero millivolts per decade. That is, the current should switch by several orders of like several orders of magnitude or by several decades within zero millivolts itself or 0 0.001 millivolts itself. I mean, in a very small change in the voltage, the current should shoot up pretty rapidly. So here the slope is close to zero millivolts per decade. However, if you calculate the slope here, so here you can see that you know TFET current actually rises abruptly as compared to a MOSFET current. So because of this, TFETs are kind of better switches as compared to MOSFET. However, on current of TFET is also low as compared to MOSFET. So this reduction in on current creates a difficulty for TFETs. And also, uh, as I told in the last lecture or in the previous discussion session, MOSFETs are symmetric structures. So you can employ tricks like you know, contact sharing. However, tunnel FETs are asymmetric structures. So tunnel FETs are PIN diodes. It's not NPN or PNP structure. It's P plus I N plus structure. So if it is P plus I N plus structure, then contact sharing and all is pretty difficult because it's not a symmetric structure anymore. So that is also one of the reasons why defects like, you know, so first is reduction, reduced on state current. Second is uh, asymmetric, like asymmetric behavior. However, if you look at its like switching characteristic, it is switching sharply as compared to a MOSFET and it's a better switch as such. However, it's on state resistance is also, you know, pretty high as compared to a MOSFET on state resistance. So this was just, you know, uh, like make you aware about what exactly is happening, what exactly are tunnel effects. So what is the research? I mean, what is happening exactly in the research field? Okay. So with this, let us talk about, you know, implementation of positive switch and a negative switch using MOSFETs. So MOSFETs and MOSFETs can implement this positive switch. So positive switch, let us just recap the property. Apply input equals to zero, X and Y are disconnected or it possesses a hard high, like a high resistance. Apply A equals to logic one, that is high voltage, X and Y are connected by a small resistance. Negative switch, apply A equals to zero logic, then X and Y are connected using a low resistance. Apply A equals to one logic, that is high logic, then X and Y are connected by a R high, right? So these two positive and negative switches can be obtained by enhancement mode and channel MOSFET for positive switch, and enhancement mode P channel MOSFET for negative switch. And you know that, you know, if you want to get best properties I and mean, in symmetric TPLS, TPHL and all those things, you, you should have a positive switch at the bottom and a negative switch at the top for inverted, like for inverters. And you should have the reverse of it for non-inverting buffer. If you want symmetric TPHL and TPLS, we discussed that in the last lecture. So these are basically the different symbols which people use for enhancement mode and channel MOSFET. Why enhancement mode? So whenever your VTH is positive for N channel MOSFET, we say that it's an enhancement mode MOSFET. Whenever the VTH is negative for a P channel MOSFET, we say that it's an enhancement mode P channel MOSFET. What exactly is enhancement mode MOSFET? So at VGS equals to zero, if the device is off, then it is called enhancement mode MOSFET. What exactly do I mean by that? So for N MOSFET, if for VGS equals to zero, we have no current flowing between drain and source, it's enhancement mode. We have to apply a positive VGS in order to invert this cha like channel and in order to cut, like make conduction possible. Similarly for P channel MOSFET, if for VGS equals to zero, so here I told that S is at a higher potential for P MOSFET. So at VGS equals to zero, what does that mean? So VGU should also be VDD. So for VGS equals to zero, that is VG equals to VS equals to VDD. If there is no channel here, if there is no current flowing, then it is called enhancement mode and we have to apply a negative VGS or I would say a positive VSG. Negative VGS or a positive VSG to kind of create an inversion layer of holes here and make the current flow possible. So in such modes of operation, we tell that you know it's an enhancement mode MOSFET. Now there are several symbols for these MOSFETs which you must have encountered previously. So here, this kind, this arrow kind of tells you the direction of the current. 
So you always like you also did 201 ESC 201 that you know current flowing into the node is positive. So in a n type MOSFET, electrons flow from source to drain, and hence the current flows from drain to source. So current is flowing into this device at the drain. So it's positive current and it is flowing like this. However, for a P type MOSFET, source is at a higher potential, and therefore, what happens? The majority carriers, like uh, the carriers which are responsible for current flow, are inversion like are inversion holes, like you know, holes in the inversion layer. So, if source is at a higher potential, how how will these holes flow? These holes will flow in the direction like this. Drain is grounded. So here, the direction of current is like this. So the arrow is like this. However, since the current is flowing opposite to that, like since the current is flowing into the drain, like here the current is flowing, like external current is flowing into the drain here. Like this, the external current is flowing into the drain. Here, the current is flowing out of the drain, right? This current will flow out of the drain. So, current flowing out of any node is a negative current. So, the current in your PMOS is negative and the current in your NMOS is positive. That is what it exactly means. And this arrow shows the direction of the current. Now, you have this another representation where we have this body terminal as well. And the arrow basically represents the direction of PN junction. So here, the body is channel, which is kind of you know p-type though. So it's p-type, and you know this uh, I would say source and drain are n-type. So it's something like this, right? You have p n type. So the diode direction is something like this. It's p, and then it's n. I mean, there is no diode as such in the channel, but if you look at the like look at the uh, junctions, we have p n junction between body and source, and p n junction between body and Similarly, if you look at this transistor, here you have n-type channel. So the body is like n-type. So it's so if you have a diode, the n-type is connected here. And D and S are p-type. So it's like the diode direction or the junction direction is in this. So that is why these arrows are opposite. And that, that's how you also represent it. This is more common for analog circuits. However, for this course, we would avoid any kind of symbol. And we would have a symmetric kind of structure because I told that you know contact sharing is possible only when you have symmetric structure. So we cannot define whether a terminal is source or a drain unless we know about the voltages applied at those terminals. For an NMOS, whichever terminal S or D, like whichever terminal left or right, has a higher voltage, that becomes a drain. Let's say I apply higher voltage on the right terminal, this becomes a drain, this becomes a source. Now I apply higher voltage on the left terminal. This becomes a drain. This becomes a source. It is indistinguishable just by looking at the MOSFET. Depends on the voltage that you are applying to. Similarly, now let us look at this PMOS. So in PMOS, source is at always at a higher potential. So if we apply a higher potential here, this becomes source. This becomes drain. If we apply higher potential on this terminal, this becomes source. This becomes drain. But the main point to note is it's symmetric and Whichever mode you apply higher voltages, that becomes source in your PMOS. And also, we have represented this circle so as to you know tell that it's a negative kind of switch. So this was all about you know uh, the different implementation of transistors as switches. Now let us get into the details of it. So now let us talk about NMOS. So we have done a lot about it in your discussion sessions and tutorial. So the difference between gate and source, I mean potential between gate and source is VGS. The potential between drain and source is VDS. And this kind of implements a positive switch. So let us talk something about its operation. So VGS less than or equal to VTM, we know that it doesn't conduct. And when it doesn't conduct, or when the current is pretty low, then we say that the resistance is pretty high between drain and source. When VGS is greater than VTM, yes, there is an inversion layer and it conducts. So you, it shows a low resistance. The resistance of the inversion layer is pretty low. So it shows a low resistance between source and drain. And also the point to note here is for and like for n MOSFETs, the VTH or the threshold voltage is positive. Since here VGS, so we apply V in at gate, as I told from the beginning. So here VGS is V in minus something. VS is generally grounded. Let's say if we have some appreciable voltage there, then also it should not be you know uh, larger than VD. That that should be taken care of. So if V in is applied here. And if Vs is kind of at a lower potential, then Vg minus Vs is effectively the input. So it's proportional to the input, right? Vgs is always proportional to the input. And as such, it's a positive switch. So Vn equals to high, this will conduct, or it will be R low. Vn equals to low, it 
bone conduct and so on. Now let us look at PMOS as well. So in PMOS, I told that VS is greater than VD always by convention. So VGS is negative and VDS is negative here. And the current is also negative. Drain current is also negative. So a general kind of you know concept or since we are talking about positive logics, I mean, in our circuit, let's say we don't have negative supply, we only have a positive supply. So if we have to talk about PMOS only in terms of positive voltages, not in terms of negative voltages, because VGS equals to negative, VDS equals to negative. So what we can do, we can talk in terms of VSG. So if VGS is negative, VSG has to be positive. VSG has to be positive. So to like you know work with positive supply itself, we talk in terms of VSG and VSD. So now let us talk about VSG and VSD and let us look at its performance. So VSG less than equals to mod of VTP, transistor does not conduct and hence we have high resistance between source and gain. So here why mod of VTP because typically threshold voltage is negative for PMOS. Now VSG greater than VTP, mod of VTP, transistor conducts and we have like you know uh, inversion layer of holes and R is low between source and gain regions. So we have to work with VSG and VSD. So whatever expressions you got for you know N MOSFET, you just replace VGS by VSG, VDS by VSD, and IDS by minus ID. Actually, yeah, I'll just get to that as well. Here also, I told that input will be applied to VG. However, we are talking in terms of VSG, right? So VSG is VS minus VG. So I in is applied at VG, but effectively your VSG is something that is input. So V in signal is applied on VG, but effective input is always VGS. Here it's VSG, but here it's VGS. So what is VSG? VSG is simple, simply VS minus V in, right? So here your VSG is VSD minus VGD, and that is proportional to minus of V in. So here, since your VG is proportional to minus of V in, that is VG equals to zero, you are VSG equals to one. So effectively that is greater than mod of VATHP and since it will conduct. Now VG equals to VDD, VSG equals to zero, which is less than mod of VTP, so the transistor won't conduct. So VG equals to high, this doesn't conduct, VG equals to low, this conducts. So that is why it's a negative switch. Now let us look at the output characteristics of a MOSFET, which we already discussed. So as we discussed in those sessions, that VTN is the threshold voltage of this enhancement port MOSFET and it is greater than zero for N channel MOSFET, right? So VGS less than VTN or transistor is in cutoff region. However, I told that there is a finite amount of current which flows, but for the time being or for simplicity, in this course, henceforth, we'll assume that ID equals to zero when the switch is off. This is not the real case. In practical or in reality, a sub-threshold leakage current flows. Its magnitude is less, but still it flows. And it also hampers the performance of your circuit. However, for you know uh, first-hand calculation or you know to make our analysis or life far simpler, we'll assume that ID equals to zero whenever you know VGS is less than VTN. Also, when VGS is greater than equal to VTH, that is when inversion layer is there, MN is outside the cutoff, and ID is a function of VDS as well as VGS. So when the switch is on, the drain current is not only a function of VGS, but it's also a function of VDS, depending upon the relationship between VDS, VGS and threshold voltage, right? So what was those like, what were those relationships? So when the drain to source voltage is less than VGS minus VT, we say that the channel is uniform, I mean the inversion layer is uniform and the device is in the linear region and the current relationship between drain, drain current, uh, the gate to source voltage and threshold voltage and the VDS was given like this. It's Kn dash W by L, VGS minus VT, VDS minus VDS square by 2. Why do we call it as a linear region? Because if VDS is pretty small, then we can ignore the first, we can ignore this term, VDS square by 2, and hence ID is proportional to VDS. And therefore, we say that it's a linear, like it's a linear region of operation in the output characteristics. So what is output characteristics? Output characteristics is IDS plotted as a function of VDS. So it's the output current plotted as a function of output voltage. So output current is ID and output voltage is VDS for our N MOSFET. Now what happens when VDS is greater than or equal to VGS minus VT? We say that pinch off has occurred close to the drain end and the current saturates. It doesn't you know, increase further. And the reason I discussed in the last discussion session 
So in that case, your drain current becomes K n dash W by L, and we replace V T S by V T S minus V T, and then it becomes V T S minus V T whole square by two. So here it acts like a current source, and here it acts like a resistor. However, it's not an ideal current source. What happens is because of channel length modulation or this pinch off. So the channel length is modulated because of pinch off, and because of that, there is an additional term one plus lambda V T S. So now let us look at the output characteristics. So for different VGS values, as you increase the VGS, your drain current magnitude increases. However, the kind of trend is almost same. I mean, you know, first it increases linearly and then it starts to saturate, right? And saturation happens at a voltage which is VGS minus VT. So this curve is nothing but VGS minus VT. VT is constant. So as VGS is increasing, this VGS minus VT is also increasing like this. So here, before we, this region, I mean, before VGS minus VT, it's in resistive mode of operation. Beyond this, it's in saturation mode, and you see that you know you have like this acting as a constant current source. So here in saturation region, you have ID versus VG. So ID is not no longer related to VDS, but it's related to VG in as a quadratic. So it has a quadratic relationship with VG. And where will be that cutoff? So cutoff will be somewhere in like in this line. When VG is less than medium, this would be cutoff. So this is cutoff. This is resistor. Like this entire portion is resistive, when where VDS is less than VGS minus VTM, and this entire region is saturation. Now, what exactly is KN dash? So KN dash is nothing but mu and C ox equals to mu and epsilon ox by T ox, which is process transconductance parameter. Mu is the mobility of the electrons. So you must have done this in two or two ten. So I I would not go through it again. And what is KN? KN is simply KN dash W by L, which is called the gain factor of the device. And as I told that this kind of thing was Uh, not exactly perfect current source, but you have some dependence upon this. Uh, like you know, channel length modulation is also there. That is, pinch off leads to a reduction in the channel length, and that reduction in the channel length is kind of modeled as one plus lambda VDS. And I discussed it that L minus delta L is kind of you know when you invert it and bring it to the top, then it becomes one plus lambda VDS. We derived it as well. So this is all about you know the output characteristics of N MOSFET. However, this kind of characteristics, that is, quadratic relationship of ID and VGS. As well as you know this formula or this value of saturation that is VDS equals to VGS minus VT this will saturate. These are valid only for long channel MOSFET. So in the last discussion session we already discussed that when it comes to short channel MOSFETs the lateral electric field becomes pretty high. So what is the lateral electric field from drain to source? It's simply VDS divided by LG. So that is LG is the length over which this uh, applied voltage is falling. So this VDS by LG can be pretty high. and we saw that you know mobility doesn't follow a linear relationship with the electric field in that case so what happens if the electric field reaches a critical electric field dc then what happens the velocity saturates the velocity of the carrier saturates so mobility degrades basically because of increase in the number of collisions and because of that the velocity saturates and for short channel devices vdsp lg since lg is pretty small this uh, electric field is pretty high and critical electric field may be reached in the channel well before when the drain to source applied voltage is less than vgs minus p so in our short channel devices the drain current can saturate or this vds sat is not vgs minus vt it can be even less than vgs minus vt depending upon the length of the channel so if the length is pretty small then for a very small applied vds you will reach that critical electric field in the channel region and because of that the carrier will saturate So in short channel devices, your typical VDS sat or the VD at which you know the uh, carrier saturate or the velocity saturates that is less than VGS minus V. So let us discuss something about output characteristics of you know these short channel devices. So last time we also derived or we discussed about what happens in the linear region that is as long as VDS is less than VDS sat in short channel devices, what happens? We derived that you know we have to add this uh, like kappa component kappa of VDS. in the original drain current equation for linear region and what exactly is this kappa vds this kappa vds is nothing but a function which is given by 1 divided by 1 plus v by epsilon like 1 divided by ec times l so this ec is the critical electric field here i have written it like you know some uh, greek terminology of for e but just remember that it's nothing but 1 divided by 1 plus v divided by ec into l So what is V by L? So let's talk about kappa VDS. So kappa VDS would be one divided by one plus VDS divided by L one by E C, right? So what is VDS divided by L? We told that VDS divided by L is the lateral electric field. 
So it is simply one divided by one plus e lateral divided by e. So it's kind of you know telling you what exactly like how much your device is close to Vsat or velocity saturation. So it's a measure of degree of velocity saturation. So the larger it is, I mean, the larger E is towards EC, the lower will be the current. The smaller is the value of V by L. What would happen if this V by L is pretty small? This term ceases to be, you know, uh, one divided by a large quantity, which is zero. So it is one by one, so it's one. So if V by L is pretty small, that is, if electric field in the channel is pretty small, then this term ceases to one. And this is same as the equation for a long channel MOSFET. However, if E is comparable to EC, Comparable, not equal. So if E is comparable to AC, then what happens? Then this current is smaller as compared to a long channel MOSFET current. So what we discussed earlier, that this velocity saturates the moment E becomes equal to EC, that is VDS by L. If that becomes equal to EC, then velocity saturation is reached. And at that point of time, we can say that, you know, the drain voltage corresponding to that uh, electric field is your so, like saturation drain voltage. So VDS sat here simply can be approximated as VDS, VDS sat divided by L gives you close to EC electric field in the lateral direction. Also, if you calculate it, I mean, if you derive it, you will obtain that, you know, VDS sat is nothing but kappa of VGS minus VT times VGS minus VT. So this kappa of VGS minus VT, what is it? It's one divided by one plus VGS minus VT divided by EC into L. And you know that this kappa function is always less than one. It's a one only when this, you know, uh, V or this argument is close to zero. So only when this VGS minus VT is close to zero, then this term is equal to VGS minus VT. Otherwise, for all other values of VGS minus VT, you have this term less than VGS minus VT. So kappa of this multiplied by this is less than VGS minus VT. So we can say that VDS sat for short channel devices is always less than VGS minus VT. So this leads to early saturation. So what I mean by early saturation, so if this is the curve output characteristics of, you know, so this is ID for, sorry for this. I mean, you should never draw curves where you haven't mentioned what is X axis, what is Y axis. So here X axis is voltage, brain voltage to be precise and Y axis is current. Sorry for the inconvenience. So here, if this represents the output characteristics of long channel MOSFET and it saturates at this VGS minus 50, the short channel MOSFET will sat would saturate at a pretty small voltage. VD sat, which is less than VGS minus V. So this leads to an early saturation. I mean, this uh, velocity saturation leads to an early saturation in the case of short channel MOSFETs as compared to a long channel MOSFETs. Also, when VDS is greater than or equal to VDS sat, we simply replace this VDS here by VDS sat, and VD sat can be given by this. And then ID sat becomes kappa VD sat, and then this uh, K and dash W by L VGS minus VT times VD sat, and then VD sat square by 2. Note here that, you know, this is not VGS minus VT whole square as we were getting for long channel. So here, if you like, you know, look at the dependence of an ID sat on VGS, it's linear. However, in the case of long channel MOSFET, it was quadratic. So this is another difference between long channel MOSFET and short channel MOSFET. So for long channel MOSFET, ID versus VG follows a quadratic dependence on VG. So here the x-axis is VG, sorry again. However, if you look at the short channel devices, their relationship with VG is kind of linear because VDS sat, VD sat is kind of, you know, it has got uh, no dependence on VG. So here also, if you look at VD sat, it's VGS minus VT divided by one plus something VGS minus VT. So that kind of ignores all the dependence between VGS of this VD sat on VGS. So it's kind of a linear relation between VGS and ID sat. So this is also something which is different between long channel MOSFET and short channel MOSFET. And if you go and measure any MOSFET from the market right now, when you go to the industry, you will always encounter this kind of a characteristics because nowadays we only talk about short channel MOSFETs. So I thought that, you know, it's better to you know, uh, teach you this. Okay. So now let us look at the output characteristics of P MOSFETs as well, because, you know, understanding P MOSFET is somewhat difficult because it's not much talked about even in the books or, you know, even in courses, people just say that, you know, uh, you just do everything for N MOSFET and then you can do same things for P MOSFET, but they don't discuss it. But here we will be discussing. It. So for P MOSFET, as I told, VS is greater than VD, and we talk in terms of VSG or VSD, just because we are living in a positive world. So VSG is positive, VSD is positive, VDS is negative, VGS is negative, and the current is negative. 
because the current is now flowing from source to drain. Okay, so VTP that is the threshold voltage of the transistor, P type transistor, it is less than zero for enhancement mode of operation. So threshold voltage is negative. Why is negative? Because we need to apply a negative voltage here. I mean, we need to apply a kind of negative voltage in order to, you know, pull out holes here from the bulk or from the channel. So if you talk in terms of VSG, as long as your VSG is less than mod of VTP, your transistor is in cutoff region, your PMOSFET is in the cutoff region, brain current is zero. I mean, that is what we are assuming for first-hand calculation or, you know, uh, for making our life simple. However, ID is not zero, it's some appreciable value. And we say that the switch is off. However, if VSG is greater than equals to mod of VTP, we say that it's outside the cutoff region and brain current is a function of VSD as well as VSG, the switch is on. Now here also, depending upon the relationship between VSG, VSD and VTP, we'll have two regions of operation when it is in the like outside the cutoff region. So if VSD is less than VSG minus mod of VTP, you see that you know everything here is similar to the equation of N channel MOSFET because we are talking about VSD, VSG, and mod of VTP. We are talking about positive quantities. So everything here follows similar relationship as compared to N MOSFET. And this is very important for us because it makes our life simpler. Like, you know, when you are analyzing, you just, you know, use VSD, VSG, and VDP. You don't get confused with the sign. So as long as VSD is less than VSG minus VTP, the device is in the linear region and you have current as ID equals to KP dash W by L, VSG minus VTP mod, VSD minus VSD square by root. So everything remains here, just replace VSG, VGS by VSG, VTN by mod of VTP and VDS by VSD. And when VSD is greater than or equal to VSG minus mod of VT, what we say that, you know, device has entered into the saturation region and the brain current again for long channel device will be KP dash W by L, VSG minus mod of VTP whole square divided by T. For short channel devices, the equations will be same as that discussed in the last slide. Just replace VGS by VSG, VTA, VTN by mod of VTP and VDS by VST. Also, KP dash is mu PCOX, similar to you know uh, mu and COX, and it's called process transconductance parameter where it is the whole mobility. Then this is called the gain factor of the device. And also here, you like this is the output characteristics. So you can see that VDS is negative. Your VGS is also negative. This is VGS equals to let's say zero, then VGS equals to minus something, VGS equals to minus something, minus something, and the largest voltage, I mean minus 2.5 will be this one. And the current also, you can see that it's in the negative direction. So everything is negative for a P MOSFET. So this you should understand. And when we talk about it, I mean, when we give analogy to N MOSFET, we just talk about positive quantities because we live in a positive world. So that is why we replace everything by VSD, VSG. Okay, so also these characteristics are again valid for, you know, uh, the short channel regime itself, uh, sorry, uh, for long channel regime itself. And these are not perfect current source, I mean, perfect uh, current source, constant current source, but they also have some brain voltage dependence because of pinch off in the saturation region. And that is why we have one plus lambda VSD. And here also you see that we have replaced VDS by VSD. And also remember that this is only like, you know, valid for saturation region. In linear region, you don't have this term. Although, you know, when, while making some compact models like level one or something, you kind of make it even for linear, for linear region also you introduce this. And you say that, you know, we want continuity. That is why we are introducing it, but that's not true. I mean, that's not at all the correct picture. It's always there when you have saturation region of operation, when you have channel as pinched off. Now, till this discussion, we have not talked about this body terminal. In all these MOSFETs, it's not a three terminal device, but a four terminal device. And the properties can also be modulated by this four terminal, which is called the body terminal. See, uh, if it is planar MOSFET, if it is a bulk MOSFET, that bulk MOSFET means that you have a body terminal. There are also some devices where body terminal is absent. It is called floating body device, or where you know there's no contact to the body terminal. So SOI, silicon on insulator, is something where there is no contact to the body terminal. You can read about that. So nowadays there are two technologies on which these devices are made. One is bulk substrate, where you have body contact. So you have bulk fin fits, you have bulk gate all around nanometers. There is also a substrate where you have silicon on insulator. So there is a silicon wafer. On top of it, there is an insulator. Then again, there is a silicon. And on that silicon, you make this device. So there you don't have contact to that silicon on insulator. 
So you have SOI FinFETs, you have SOI gate all around, nano airfix as well. So there are two kinds of technologies on which you know devices are made right now. So if you are interested, you can look at that. So for the time being, let us also discuss about the body terminal. We know that it can modulate you know the threshold voltage, so it can also change your device characteristics. So let us talk about the body terminal for N MOSFET. So for N MOSFET, we saw in the discussion session one that you know if you apply a negative body bias. What do you mean by negative body bias? A negative body bias means that the body BBS, BB to S. So S is grounded, typically in case of N MOSFET. So BB is negative. So if BB is negative, we saw that BT was increasing. Why BT was increasing? Let's say the channel is inverted, and now you are applying a negative body bias. So if you are applying a negative body bias, what happens? The depletion regions at channel source and channel drain interface they'll kind of you know expand. So once they are expanding. They'll also extract some of the charges in order to maintain charge neutrality, right? So those charges will come from those electrons in the inversion loop. So now, if you want to have same concentration of electrons at the surface as the bulk concentration, which is the definition of strong inversion or the threshold voltage, you'll have to apply a larger VG in order to achieve same level of electron concentration. So if you apply negative body bias, your VT increases as a depletion region at the channel ring and channel source junctions end up increasing, and to sustain those charges. The electrons are extracted from the surface, and hence you have to apply a larger voltage in order to gain the same amount of electron concentration at the surface. So, in these devices, body terminal is connected to the most negative voltage, typically ground. So, ground is the most negative voltage because we do not usually have you know both positive and negative supply on a chip. So, ground is the typically most negative voltage that we have. Why uh, we connect it to the most negative voltage so that we are not forward biasing. The channel to source or channel to drain uh, junction. That is why we connect it to most negative voltage. So this is your case. So we do not show this body terminal explicitly, but whenever it is not shown, you remember that is connected to the most negative voltage. That is, you know, your uh, ground. Similarly, if you look at you know the body bias effect on T MOSFET, if you have positive body bias, or I would say, you know, if you bias the body positive in case of T MOSFET, then your mode of VTP increases for similar reasons. As we discussed for N MOSFET, you should analyze that yourself. And in B MOSFETs, the body terminal is connected to most positive voltage. Why so? So as to you know, not make this channel to source or channel to drain junction forward biased. And typically, what is the most positive voltage available on the chip? It's VD. So if you look at the circuit or if you look at the original picture of a P MOSFET, your body will be also connected to V supply, and V source is also connected to typically V supply. However, you know, in this course, whenever we will be discussing about PMOS or NMOS, we won't be showing these body connections. So whenever it is not shown, you can assume that it is either connected to ground for NMOS and it's connected to the V supply for PMOS. However, uh, I would be discussing a particular case which is generally used to change the switching voltage or the inverter switching threshold of a, like inverter switching threshold or the switching voltage of the gates by you know, changing the VS or VS, like the changing the resource of NMOS or PMOS. So there, what people do is they kind of exploit this uh, difference between, like they, they exploit this EPS difference to increase or decrease the threshold voltage, so as to change the inverter threshold threshold voltage. So that also I'll discuss when I will be discussing about CMOS inverter. So now with this kind of discussion about you know MOSFETs as switches, let us go ahead and make inverters with N MOSFET. So how can we do that? So we just replace the positive switch with this N MOSFET, and then we take the output at this drain of this N MOSFET, apply the input at the gate of this N MOSFET, and ground the source of this N MOSFET. Here also we are using a resistor. Let us look at what exactly happens in this N MOS based inverter. So let's take the case of V equals to low, that is V equals to zero. V just is zero. It's in cutoff region, so this will provide a very high resistance. And that is why what should what we can say, not a very high resistance. Ideally, I mean uh, the definition that we have given, ID will be equals to zero. So in that case, V supply is directly connected to V out. So we have like V out is high. Now let's say we have V in is high. So if V in is high, what happens? Your effective VGS is high, and therefore this transistor conducts, and therefore this V out kind of discharges to the ground. However, V out doesn't discharge to the ground completely because it's V supply RL and then R on of this transistor. So this forms a resistor divider circuit. So it's V low will only be ground, but V low will be simply you know R low 
of this transistor divided by RL plus R low. R low is what? R L R low is the R on of this transistor. So R on divided by R L plus R on. However, that is pretty small as compared to VDD. It's pretty close to ground. So we like tell that it's low. The output is low. Now, similarly to the previous exercise, if we swap the resistor and MOSFET, it becomes non-inverting buffer, and you can kind of you know verify its operation yourself. 